Alright, in this section 5-6 we're going to talk about graphs of other trigonometric functions. We're going to understand the graph of y is equal to the secant of x and y is equal to the cosecant of x. And we're going to graph variations of that. Uh, then we'll get into tangent and cotangent. So let's start. Uh, first thing, the way you graph secant and cosecant is you actually use the concept of your reciprocal functions. So to graph secant, what we're really going to do is we're going to take the reciprocal of cosine. To graph secant, we're going to take the, or cosecant, we're going to graph the reciprocal of sine. So secant, cosine, cosecant, sine. Keep that in mind. We'll look at this one. Uh, so what we're really trying to do in a problem like this is we're going to, we're going to pretend that it looks like this. So to graph secant, we're going to treat it just like we would a cosine and see if we can't figure it out. So because we're actually going to use the primary function of cosine, uh, we're going to need to go ahead and find everything that's involved with cosine. So first we're going to find our amplitude by taking the absolute value of A. You can find your period by taking 2 pi and dividing it by B. B is X's coefficient, where A is the coefficient of your trig function. So when we do that, we get 2. Next we can find our phase shift. The ends for sine and cosine are pi and or 0 and 2 pi. In the middle, you put what you're taking the sine or cosine of. And then we can just solve for x. So first thing we do is we subtract 4 pi from each side. When you do that, you will get uh, negative 4 pi is less than or equal to pi x, which is less than or equal to negative 2 pi. Our next step is to go ahead and divide everything by pi. And when we do that, we finally get our phase shift to be negative 4 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to negative 2. Again, a little check in your problem. The distance between these two, this is where we start and this is where we end. The distance between these has to be 2. So uh, it should make sense. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Last thing we need to calculate is our divisions. To find our divisions, you're going to take whatever your period is and divide it by 4. So we'll get one half. So we found all the information that we need. Uh, now we're just going to need to graph it. So let's move over to the next thing here. Is our x and y axis? Uh, the length is two, so we're going to try to make this as even as we can. This is negative two, and double that, so negative four. We're going to add that nice little uh, one half each time. So this is eight halves. So when we add that, we'll be at um, uh, 1 half, so this is negative 7 halves. Add it again, that 1 half to this, and you'll be at negative 6 halves, which is negative 3. Add it one more time, and you'll be at negative 5 halves. Add it one more time, and you'll be at negative 2, which is negative 4 halves. So you can see we started here. We added our divisions 1 half four times and we ended up where we were supposed to end up. So I think we're on the right track. Good little check in terms of you graphing. And then what we need to do is go back and look. Since we're graphing two secant, okay, we're actually going to graph the cosine. So it's a positive two is your coefficient. So positive cosine starts at a maximum value. Since our amplitude is two, our maximum value will be two. So we'll be at two and then zero and then negative two and then 0, and then 2. So the graph of our cosine will look a little something like that. Remember, it is a wave function, so this will just continue in the same process on and on that way, and also this way. And it would go for infinity in both directions. All right, now uh, what we actually need to do is figure out the secant now. So to figure out the secant, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, uh, the concept of our reciprocal function. So um, what we would normally do is we would take, find the uh, cosine first, take the reciprocal, and then multiply it by 2. Well, the cosine normally is 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. When you multiply that by 2, you get 2. Okay, so 1, multiply it by 2, you get 2. 1, take the reciprocal to find our secant value. The reciprocal of 1 is 1. When you multiply that by 2, you get 2 also. So you can see your, uh, your cosine and your secant will actually share that value. This has a cosine of 0, and our uh, nice little a is 2. So um, to get our cosine value, we would just say 0, 0 times 2 is 0. 
But uh, for our secant, what we're actually going to do is we're going to take 0, take the reciprocal of 0. So we'll take the reciprocal first and then multiply it by 2. Well, the cosine value there is 0. The reciprocal of 0 is 1 over 0, which is undefined, and when you multiply that by 2. Now, the trick is, is that anything that's undefined will be a vertical asymptote. At negative 3, we had a cosine value of negative 1. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. So that's why we got a cosine value of negative 2. But negative 3, when you take, is 1. When you take the reciprocal of that, you actually get negative 1 also. Negative 1 times 2 is 2. So you can see they share those values. Here we have another value of uh, 0. So we'll have another vertical asymptote. Here, we already did this one once. If you have a value of 2, that's going to be shared. Now, that's great, but what we have to do is figure out what happens uh, in between our integers. What happens in between those and those and those? So what we should know is about a vertical asymptote. As you approach a vertical asymptote, your function either goes to positive or negative infinity. As you can see, all these red values right here, as you approach the asymptote, those are all positive. So if you look at this one, like this is 1, we'll say that's 1. The reciprocal of 1 is 1, okay? But then you multiply that by 2, and obviously you get a nice little value of, uh, of 2. So, but you come down here, and these values are going to be like 1 half. Well, the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So all these values are positive. And when you take the reciprocal of a positive number, there's no way you can get a negative. So as we approach our vertical asymptote, your function value has to go to positive infinity. Here, as you can see, all these are negative. When you take the reciprocal of a negative, you have to get a negative. So as we approach your vertical asymptote, your function either goes to positive or negative infinity. Since all those values have to be negative, then we get a negative infinity. These are all have y values that are negative. So as you approach, it's going to go to negative infinity. And then over here, you can see all these y values are positive. So when you take the reciprocal, we go to positive infinity. Now what we actually have is we've actually graphed two things. We use the red graph, which is the cosine, to help us find what the secant was. Now if they're asking you just for the secant, what they're actually looking for is just the green graph. So your graph would actually look something like that. So that would be what the secant looks like. Now it is just one, uh, one, one period of our graph. It would actually repeat we would go to positive infinity, there would be a vertical asymptote, this would go just like this, whoops, I'm going up too far, so I'm not paying attention, uh, so our graph would look a little something like that, and it will continue in that same process. Now I haven't gone through and figured out where the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes are, but hopefully you kind of get the idea. I mean there are no horizontal asymptotes, but the vertical ones. So we'll go back and return it to its original graph.